Yay, I'm all recording on my end. It's not... Oh, now it's reading. But a couple seconds of silence because I'm going to leave the ceiling fan on. Yep. Okay. And now we honor the ceiling fan with a couple seconds of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ceiling fan, for your dedication to helping circulate air to keep us from dying during the summer. Because <laughs> Ember is cheap and doesn't turn her air conditioner down. <laughs> Uh, hello, I am Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 12, Amending Fences. I really enjoyed this episode. I had to pause it a couple of times for myself because I kind of get feelings for characters. I'm very empathetic with the characters I see on scene, and any time I think the character may be embarrassed, I have a tendency to pause it. But that's the only reason <laughs> I pause it, unlike for... The other couple episodes where I was like, ugh. <laughs> this was you getting feels. Mm hmm Yeah. You know, for retcon, it was pretty well done. And we get a Twilight recolor. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one thing I was going to do before this, is I was going to look up and see what Moondancer looked like in Gen 1. Because that name sounds <laughs> familiar. Moondancer is a recolor of Twilight Velvet from Gen 1. And in this version, he's a recolor of Twilight. <laughs> So that kind of works out since Twilight Velvet is Twilight's mom. So this episode had a really nice flow to it. I didn't really have any problems with it. It felt nice, especially the end. And I like how everything worked out. It's a very pleasant story. And a, I can't really remember what the lesson was, but I remember it was well done. Yes, it was very well done. But I have to qualify that and say for retcon. Because Twilight was not friends with any of those three. Her behavior in Season 1, Episode 1 clearly shows that she does not have friends. That she does not consider these ponies friends. And that they did not really consider her friends because as she was running off to go do her studying, they were saying cutting remarks behind her back about how she didn't have any friends. Yes, I went back and looked at Episode 1 because I wanted to make sure that the party was really for Moondancer. And it was. <laughs> I was wondering if they actually reanimated that scene or just reused it. <laughs> no, it looks like they reused it. They just left out the part where Twilight was running off and Minuet, Lemonhearts, and the other pony were saying their negative remarks about Twilight. Mm. By the way, in the fandom, Minuet is known as Colgate <laughs> because her hair resembled toothpaste. Yeah, I thought I recognized her from some pony videos about brushing one's teeth. Mm -hmm. You know, where vinyl brushes with wubs. Those things I noticed in the animation that was really a nice touch. When Minuet turns around and changes direction, because her hair is split in half, her hair actually changes in the animation. They didn't just flip her and go, oh, yeah, it looks the same no matter which way she turns. No, her hair actually flips. So when she's facing one way, it's the blue. When she faces the other, it's that light blue. Oh, that was a nice touch. What's really interesting is, in the voice acting department, a lot of the main six are actually voicing the other friends. <laughs> oh, and when she said, I know the person to get for this, I was like, okay, the friends she knows that she could get to come and help her with this problem are... Discord? Kind of. Because it would be a laugh. Pinkie Pie? Or Luna? Those are the three I came up with when Twilight went, oh, I know who to get for this. I was leaning towards Luna or Pinkie Pie, but I thought Discord would be kind of an interesting twist. <laughs> I just can't see Twilight going to Discord for help with a friendship problem. At least <laughs> not this kind of friendship problem. So I was thinking Luna because she knows what it's like to be the outcast or Pinkie Pie because apparently the problem was the first party. So we need to have a better party and that means getting Pinkie Pie. Well, Pinkie Pie is also the master of friendship, you know. She's friends with everyone. Yeah. As was evidenced by the fact that she knew all the other ponies that Twilight came to make amends with. You know, except obviously Moondancer. Oh, and that's another kind of retcon thing that also explains some stuff that's been happening in Ponyville. The fact of the reuse of background ponies because they didn't make enough resources back then. How they explained it away is like, oh yeah, we visit Ponyville all the time because Lyra actually works there. <laughs> but Lyra also lives in Cantalot apparently, so... Well, no, they said Lyra moved to Ponyville because we saw Lyra in Season 1, Episode 1 in Canterlot. So she just happened to move to Ponyville about the same time Twilight did on a completely unrelated errand. 
And I do like, we kind of use this episode as a mirror of what would happen to Twilight if she would have continued her studies and not been sent on a mission by the princess. It does work very well as a what if. And, you know, Twilight from her perspective as the princess of friendship, who apparently treated her original friends cruddy, bad retcon. She didn't have friends. <laughs> but she has the chance to step in and help some pony who was in the same position she was. So now things are reversed. Before it was Twilight who didn't have any friends, and Celestia got her to go make friends. Now it's Moondancer who gave up on friendship, and it's Princess Twilight Sparkle who gets to help her out. And I love the trail of books that Twilight used. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Except you wouldn't be picking them up because you would find them interesting. You'd be picking them up because you'd be like, oh my god, why did someone leave these books on the ground? Well, yeah, but at least Moondancer had unicorn magic so she could balance them above her back. I would just have to throw them all in my saddlebags. <laughs> And yes, I would have gone and picked every single one up, and I would have been looking inside the cover of every single one to see if it had an owner's name or if they were all library books, in which case I would be taking them all back to the library. Mm -hmm. Or you would have, well, before you start picking up books, you would have like, found somebody to call for help from like me or something and going, you're going to hold these. What? Okay, okay. When do I ever allow you to touch books? Uh, I would be a unicorn, so I wouldn't actually be touching them. Your magic would be touching them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you would have me bring a cart then. <laughs> uh, other than the retcon, any nitpicks? No, not really. You know, except for the retcon, it's really a good episode. It flows well. It shows the what if. I love the hay cart spell to get inside the book. Reminds <laughs> me of that thing from Tactics with the book spirit creature that keeps taking the woman inside books because she loves them so much. Mm -hmm. And I liked the animation they used for that scene. I was like, oh, that's neat. Also, having a silence bubble in the library would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And speaking of reaction, looks, I love how everyone, when she starts talking to the book, look at her like, she's crazy. <laughs> I also like how Twilight went and found people in the town who actually considered themselves her friend and brought them mm -hmm. to the party. That was a nice touch because if it had just been the three and then Twilight and Pinkie Pie, it wouldn't have felt the same. When she brought people that Moondancer actually knows and interacts with. Mm-hmm. And a nice touch of a sister. Interesting. <laughs> oh, and speaking of nice touches, I just remembered something. In the scene where they're all dining together, and it's kind of awkward, in the wide shot, you can actually see a pony in the background with a menu up that looks like Starlight Glimmer. So people have started speculating that, oh, interesting. Maybe she's following Twilight around. Well, you know, Twilight did learn that spell that she couldn't master, so that would be interesting. I'll have to go back and look at background ponies. I was busy studying the nice girl marks on their vegetarian dinners. <laughs> oh, so did you have any particular parts you would call your favorite in this episode? Twilight physically being inside the book. I had a feeling that was one of your favorites. And the moment when Spike started this whole thing. Because if you fully accept the retcon, and say that, you know, these ponies were actually her friends. Yeah, she did a pretty cruddy job. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in the season two retcon of her having a brother, they still managed to keep in touch. You know, her brother was her one true friend. So that's another retcon nitpick of, yeah, you, you retconned back to the first episode and, you know, reused that footage very well, but... In season two, at the finale, you know, she admitted that she was really only friends with her brother. So, yeah, you didn't retcon your way around that one. Well, technically, they didn't retcon their way around the first one either. <laughs> Though, I gotta say, Emily Larson does a pretty good job at retconning stuff. No, it was very well done for a retcon. It was probably a better retcon than Shining Armor and Princess Cadence. And since I happen to like both of them, I can't really hold that against this episode. And it's a much milder retcon because all of these ponies were actually shown in the very first episode as opposed to Shining Armor and Cadence who previously had absolutely no mention. They just expanded the roles and nudged a little and went, oh 
yeah, they were actually friends when they were really more of acquaintances. That's a much milder retcon. Though I think we're also okay with this retcon because it's another episode we liked. The reason we're okay with the retcon of Shining Armor and Cadence is because we like those characters. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't even hold it against Cadence that she's a pink pony. And I still hold that against Pinkie Pie. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably because uh. Cadence sings better. <laughs> so, final thoughts? Yeah, that I just got a bunch of Pinkie Pie fanboys mad at me for saying some pony sang better than some pony else. <laughs> I meant final thoughts on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Those may be my final thoughts if they find me. <laughs> uh, well, last thing just popped into my head. This also kind of shows an example of a butterfly effect because just that one choice by Twilight completely changed the path of one other person. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that was meant to be the obvious lesson, but that your choices affect others and have an impact on others. Mm -hmm. So let's share our final thoughts. <laughs> Good episode. Nice retcon. It flowed very well, and since Spike wasn't the focus, I enjoyed the way he was written. I thought it was very nice that he switched out the damaged teddy bear for a photo of Moondancer with her friends. Hmm. I thought the photo was always there by the way he said, oh, there's still something in here, when he was talking about the teddy bear too. Hmm. It could have been underneath, but I think if it was, that was like retconned in because it was shown that the gift was... The teddy bear, which got damaged because, like, Spike's tail went through it. Mm -hmm. Oh, kind of funny how we went into final thoughts, but it's reminding me of things like, why did no one else take care of that place? Like, maintenance or something? Yeah, that's definitely a problem, that there were dust all over those books and spider webs, and nothing had been changed or cleaned up, because even if it was Twilight's private room, which I don't think it was. I think it was a Canterlot library room because she ran back there to look for something. It should be cleaned up on a regular basis just like the rest of the palace. Even private rooms in a palace usually have servants assigned to maintain them so shouldn't have been exactly as you left it. The book should have been dust free, at the very least closed, if not put back on the shelf. Spike's gift, since it was smashed, probably should have ended up in the trash, and there should have been no spider webs. Mm -hmm. I found the episode very enjoyable, good to watch from beginning to end, quite a good flow, and definitely a good episode. Definitely better than the other two we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that could be why we're so favorable to this one. It's like, well, after the last two... <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 12, Amending Fences. Thanks for listening. If you want to see more of my art, you can find it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with this podcast and get other tidbits, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. If you really like our podcast, please consider subscribing and or leaving comments below. Please keep them nice. If you would like some art of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description.